Right, no Scott McDonald today, everyone. I know, a huge disappointment. The good news is Scott will be back tomorrow uh, to chat all things current Celtic, but we are taking a slight deviation today and catching back up with the legend that is Sam Robson, Japanese football expert Sam Robson, uh, because yes, that's right, we've got another Japanese player inbound at Celtic, as if we weren't doing well enough so far since we returned from the break with Maida, Hitati and Kyogo all starring. We've got Kobayashi now eligible from Monday onwards. And it looks like we're adding another player, Sam. Um, we're talking to Moke Iwata, the, uh, the midfielder slash defender who is set to join from Yokohama F Marinos. Uh, and it's fair to say this one has come out of the blue. Uh, yeah, it has. Well, firstly, thank you for the introduction. Very kind of you. Happy New Year to you and to everyone watching. And yeah, this is a really interesting signing. Again, as you say, it's not one that was necessarily thought that was definitely going to happen, but it makes perfect sense. The MVP from last season can play in multiple positions. He'll give Ange plenty of options and he's a player that Ange has previously signed himself. Oh, what, what's MVP? Just just explain that to us. And, and what, what, what's that in kind of uh, Scottish or English terms? It basically, the player of the season, the most valuable player he was in last season. So, yeah, he got that award at the end of season award. So, yeah, you're, you're not signing any, a mug, you're signing a very good player. So, but are you, are you surprised uh, about Iwata moving to Scotland because he wasn't one of the two players you mentioned uh, in your, your recent video. No, he wasn't. It is a slight surprise because the two positions he played last season are currently filled at Celtic by Callum McGregor and Cameron Carter-Vickers, who are probably the most consistent players that Celtic have. Mm. So it's not immediately obvious where he's going to slot in, but he just, just has that versatility so that he can you can either play him in place of McGregor, maybe move McGregor further forward. He could move to a double pivot if you want to. He can... Play at the back. I'm not certain he'd necessarily take over from staff out of that left hand side, but he's an option. He's previously played at right back, so I know there's a chance Juranovic leaves, so he's another option there. So it does make a lot of sense when the more you think about this signing, but it's not entirely certain exactly where he's going to slot in straight away. Yeah, we'll, we'll get on and we'll talk about him. Where do you think Ange is coming from with this signing? Is it. Is he a player who could come in and, and be a star for Celtic, or is he. Without being disrespectful, you know, an upgrade on on Eddie Gucci or Abogard. Yeah, I think well, hundred percent is an upgrade on that. I don't think he starts in this. I think he's a great player, but I don't think there's a place necessarily for him to start in here. I think he's maybe more that that player that comes in for McGregor because McGregor because yes, O'Reilly has filled in that position. More you can play there, Hatate maybe as well. But there isn't really necessarily that like for like replacement for that position. So I think that will be maybe where he fits in straight away, but he is good enough to start. I think if you wanted to push McGregor forward, I think he'd do a fantastic job in there. So you've got a player, and I think it's just a measure of where this Celtic team have come, that you can sign a player as good as Iwata, and there's no guarantee that he starts this in this team. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. I mean, if he had signed a year ago, maybe he, he would have come in and started. Um, Ange signed him in his final season for F Marinos. He said at the time that he liked Iwata's, quote, strength and aggression. Uh, are, are those two words you would you would kind of pick out when, when looking at him? For, for, for certain aggression, I think he's very tenacious in the tackle. He is, yeah, reads the game really well, which helps, and then he's just right on it. He's the one that is perfect for that pressing in that, in that midfield. He will win any loose ball that's there. He's got a fantastic engine, great stamina, and, yeah, it's that football brain. It allows him to play in so many different positions because, yeah, you say he signed uh, and signed him. He signed him as a right centre-back where he played for Oita Trinita previously. He's kind of one of those advanced right centre-backs, if you can remember the Sheffield United team and the way that their centre-backs would... He was like a key part of their attack from centre-back. So I think Ange was trying to use that. He, tried, he moved to a three-at-the-back system for the first game of that 2021 season. And they're away at Kawasaki. He was playing a, a right centre-back. It's not his fault necessarily, but he was up against uh, Karo Mitomo, who's so good at Brighton now, and Rayo Hatate. Those were the two against him. And he was not given any sort of um, help back uh, back there. He was kind of overrun. And the whole team played really poorly. So they swapped out of that. And it kind of left him in a position where he didn't really know where he fit in the team because he'd obviously come as a right centre-back. 
yes, he'd occasionally played in midfield, occasionally played right back, but not really. So it took maybe a couple of months, and it was good work on the training ground, obviously, that he managed to develop himself into this player that could play centre-back, could play holding midfield, and then he just slotted in for the rest of that season, mainly under Ange, then under Kevin Muscat, and has just really developed as a player. And I think it was his previous manager, Captain Osaka, who was his manager at Oita, who just said every time he changes position, he improves as a footballer and he just gets better and better. So, yeah, that's just been his progression, really. And, yeah, I'm sure Ange, and he likes to play players in different positions. We've seen Hatate at right back for the last few games. So, yeah, he's a player that can slot in various positions. So, maybe there's not an initial place for him, but wherever he is needed, I think he'll do a very good job. Yeah, um, I think you're right. Ange, Ange does like versatile players, so so maybe that's what he's getting at with, um, with the signing of Iwata. Um, yeah, I mean he's he's someone who can hopefully make a, an impact relatively quickly. Does he does he have that kind of game that that should be suited relatively well to Scottish football? Yeah, I, I do think so. I think first of all, he knows Ange's system. He's another one of those players that you can just lock in. He knows exactly what is. Uh, wanted on the training grounds. He's had plenty of time to rest as well. It's not like Hatate when he came in, he'd had a couple of weeks off after a long J-League season because of the World Cup. He ended in October, really, or November. So has had plenty of time to rest. I think he'll be absolutely ready to go. And he's got the core strengths, really, that, um, as you alluded to earlier, that will fit in with the Scottish game. It's not going to be too much of an integration to, uh, to him. It's not going to be too different to the way he plays so yeah i would m- more so than kobayashi i think might take a little bit of time i think if called upon in that first game that is available i think iwata will be ready tell us a wee bit about his kind of progression to this point because you know i always find the japanese players really interesting because they've got the whole kind of university stuff and and various clubs that, that they start at so has it been quite a kind of upward trajectory for him at, at this point is he has he had setbacks to deal with in his career and well, only the setback that I previously mentioned on his first start uh, when he first moved to Yokohama, because previously it has just been like a really continual progression. He got into the Oita team just as they were getting promoted from J2. They're a weird yo yo club that went from J1 straight down to J3 and then straight back up again. So he kind of, with them back on their rise there, he instantly pretty much became like a first team player as soon as he got into that team. And just they were a team that in the first year in J1. They surprised everyone, a bit like Sheffield United, in terms that they were up there for like fourth, fifth for most of the season. They dropped off a little bit, but he was absolutely integral to that. Uh, stayed one more year. He got into uh, the Japan national team for the uh, Copper America. I think we spoke about that with Maida. It's a little bit of a weird one there, but he played two of the games that Japan played really well in against Uruguay and Ecuador at right back. And yeah, after that, just continued to progress and got his move to... Yokohama. There were times and before he moved to Yokohama that there were thoughts maybe he goes to Europe. At that point, it would probably have been Belgium or Holland, those sorts of areas where he would have gone. But yeah, took that, that role on at Yokohama and has just continued to grow and yeah, to become player of the season, MVP, whatever you want to call it. I think it's just yeah, tantamount to the work ethic he has because it's so rare that you get a player like a holding midfielder centre back hybrid that gets player of the year. Nobody ever cares about that. He's usually the goal goal scorer. So it just shows, yeah, his real progression and just how much he's yeah had an impact on the league. Because yeah, he was absolutely magnificent. Is he far away from the Japan squad at this moment? It, well, I think as you saw at the World Cup, there is a lot of good players in at Japan. In Japan, the centre midfield, especially, is a really good area. Endo, Morita, like Hatate, can't get into the squad, for example. So he is in that kind of cusp, be- like just below that. They played in the East Asian Championships before the World Cup, which was mainly it was domestic based, but he was like one of the stronger players in that squad. So he's on the bubble, but it's just got a lot of competition there. So. I wouldn't say for certain he'd be in the next squad or anything like that, but he's in a similar boat to Hatate. Okay, uh, right. You ready for an impossible question? You usually do quite well at these. Um, <laughs> would, would, would you liken him to a, a current player, a, a well-known player? Who, who's he most like? I knew this question was going to come, and uh, I've been trying to like look at holding midfielders and the way they play. I was comparing them to the way that McGregor played, and it's not quite similar. So the one I would say is Declan Rice in terms of the way that he plays, the way that he covers the ground. And he's good in possession. He's not 
going to necessarily play those killer um, diagonal passes. He's not necessarily going to play those, but he's very comfortable. He's very safe with the ball. He will always progress it. He's looking to go forward. And yeah, just the amount of ground that he covers, it's just quite unbelievable the amount of space they can get around. Are, are we talking Maida levels? No, nobody's Maida level. <laughs> Maida is ridiculous levels. But, yeah, he's got a really good engine and surprisingly quick as well. To look at him, you don't necessarily think that he's going to cover 30 yards too quickly, but he does. He's got a real rapid uh, turn of pace and acceleration. So, yeah, Declan Rice type of, I'm not saying he's as good as Declan Rice, but, yeah, that would be the one I would compare him to. I can see that. Um, Yeah, I I, I had a wee look on the YouTube video and a lot of the play he's doing is kind of breaking up the play and, I know what you mean. He's not a, a kind of defence uh, splitter in terms of passes, but if there's a guy on his own, uh, you know, wide on the left, and he's fifty yards away, sixty yards away, he, he will find him. It might not be inch perfect, but he seems able to to do that. So, um, you know, I'm intrigued about this one. Spinici uh, reckon that he will join on an initial loan deal with a purchase option of around £830,000, which is uh, similar to the move for Dyson Maida for F. Marinos a year ago. Um, what was the reason, again, for that kind of deal? Well, uh, well if, generally speaking, I suppose when you go over to Europe, you're not necessarily going to settle in. It's no guarantee that anyone settles in. It's such a culture shock to go from Japan to Scotland or anywhere else, I'm sure it'd be the same the other way around. So it's kind of a little bit of a fallback if, if for whatever reason it doesn't go well, is always he can just go back to Yokohama. There's that safe in it, but I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. There are so many of these are, are done in that way. So many players leave on initial loans and they all sign pretty much. So yeah, I wouldn't be concerned about it. And he's spending eight hundred thousand on the J League MVP, which is just. Imagine selling Callum McGregor for eight hundred thirty thousand. <laughs> I caught, I caught you laughing there. Um, <laughs> why, why, why do Japanese clubs not get more money for their players? Because they're just delighted that to send their players over to Europe. They kind of facilitate that. They really want their players uh, to do well. Nobody stands in the way of anyone moving. I mean, Kawasaki have just let their captain, the centre back, go for free to Qatar because he wanted to go there so yeah there's no business sense that goes into it they're just a little bit too nice and I thought after Celtic have raided Japan for so so many players so far they might think oh we could maybe make a bit of money here but yeah it doesn't seem to be that way and but it's great for Celtic I mean that's why you're going to see a lot of Japanese players go because you're not going to buy a better player than Iwata for 830,000. Yeah, I wondered if the World Cup might change that as well, but um, maybe the knock-on effect will be felt further down the line. Hearts yeah. were looking at a player as well. Did did that move ever get confirmed? Did you see that? Uh, yeah, not yet. Obviously, Yutara order from uh, Vissel Kobe. He's not in the same class as uh, the ones that Celtic have been signing, so I wouldn't necessarily push them to do that. They signed Meshino a few years ago. Yeah. He didn't really work. He's kind of in the same bracket as that. I don't think he's built for Scottish football, but... I'll support him if he does go to Hearts, but yeah, I'd probably look elsewhere if I was them. Okay, uh, so again, what what are fans going to see? I always like to kind of paint this image for supporters. The first time they watch Iwata playing, what, what are the things that will spring out? I think it's just the energy, similar to Maida in a, in a way, but the way that he covers the ground, the way that he's always in the right position, he's just so clever, he spots danger and he's there and he, he's very rarely beaten in a one-on-one tackle on the ground. So I think, yeah, just that, it's a little bit different to the way that, I think McGregor's done fantastically in that holding midfielder, but he's more natural at cutting out danger, sensing danger. So it's that sort of player. And I think maybe it might be more, Champions League, where maybe Celtic are a little bit open. They're always going to be a bit open. But that sort of player is going to yeah be put in there and cover so much ground. So, yeah, I think yeah, I just it's just hard to see exactly where he's going to fit in. I really, like with every other Japanese player, I've got, I thought, yeah, that's exactly where he's going to play. This is exactly what sort of impact he has. So Iwata is a little bit different in that. But, yeah, I think you should see a really exciting defensive player. Sorry, you, earlier when I mentioned, I think, aggression and, and strength, you kind of hesitated on the strength. Is, is he, I mean, we, we had a lot of links in the summer and people felt we needed a real kind of uh, strong player who would read the game. It seems like Iwata will, will do the latter part. Has he got the strength needed? 
Uh, yeah, I'm not certain on it, to be honest. It's always difficult to... like The Japanese football and Scottish football is so different when it comes to physicality. It is rare that you have to get into those physical duels. And he's normally one that is just so far ahead of everyone else that he doesn't have to engage in those. So he hasn't really had that test. I don't think aerially he's necessarily great. That's why I worry about him if he went to centre-back, where it's okay in Japan when you're playing, especially at Yokohama. I mean, it probably will be to an extent at Celtic when you usually have the ball and it's not that often you tested too much. So you might get away with it a little bit. But aerially, I think he would struggle in the Scottish game, mainly at centre-back. So, yeah, I think it's something he can work on, but it will be worked upon, I'm sure. He's got that base there and he's very good at yeah, improving his game. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. But, yeah, aerial strength would be a slight issue for me. Okay, uh, we're up to, to six players from Japan now in the Celtic squad. It, it may well go down to five uh, next month, but that must be some sort of record for, for a European club. Uh, well, yeah, except for maybe St. Trudence in Belgium, who just seem to love a Japanese player. But other than that, yeah, it's rare to see such a group there. And I think it really helps because often, even if the very best Japanese players that can come over, but you get lost in the culture shock and you get kind of you lose yourself. I think it's happened to Idaguchi previously uh, when he's moved to Cultural Leonessa after Leeds. I think he just got completely lost and then, yeah, his career has not really recovered from that. But yeah, to go into a team with so many Japanese players around them and a manager that understands how to work with Japanese players, I think it's a perfect place. And yeah, a lot of players I'm sure will be eyeing up a move to Celtic as yeah, their perfect European move. I wonder if this will continue even when Ange leaves the club. Ange has obviously been the driver for this, but the the club would be foolish not to continue this kind of uh, this uh, love for for Japanese players, given that that value that they have. I mean, I would love to see this just happen for the rest of the time now. Celtic just to maybe maybe not five six players in our books at a time, but certainly you know most seasons to to sign a Japanese player. Yeah, I think it should have really opened everyone's eyes to the Japanese market in terms of. There are so many quality players there, and you are never going to have to pay too much money. I think Furuhashi was the the highest, but even so, I don't think he was that much. So it really, I'm surprised that other teams, maybe in Scotland, like you said, Hearts have, but other teams, I mean, maybe a team in blue should have maybe had a look and thought uh, that was an idea. But yeah, there are definite options there. I think uh, Celtic should continue to look down that that avenue, even if Ange isn't there. It's just so easy to find really good players for very little money. So yeah, you'd be foolish not to continue that. But And hopefully for you, that Ange, if he does leave, whenever that may be, doesn't then just take all these Japanese boys with him. Yeah, so great stuff, Sam. It's always good to, to catch up. I didn't expect to, to speak to you again so soon, but, but that's the way things go. Maybe we'll, we'll have a chat at some stage in the future. You were saying you watch Celtic quite a lot as well, whenever we're in telly. Oh yeah, whenever Celtic are on or whenever I can find them, I have to watch my Japanese players. I do shut off if you make that triple substitution or three go <laughs> off on the 80th minute. Um, but yeah, I've just really enjoyed watching them grow. I think they've all played really well. I mean, last game um, against Tibernian, I thought it was magnificent. All three of them, I and mean, Hatate, not necessarily in his best position, but yeah, his ball into Kyogo, I mean, I could watch that all day long, that, that goal. And Maida had maybe his best performance, especially in the attacking sense, except for his header off the bar. But yeah, I'm really into it. I uh, hope to see a few more uh, Japanese players go, because you've, got, you've definitely got an extra supporter while, while they're still there. Excellent, excellent, Sam. It's been great to catch up again. People can, of course, uh, find you on Twitter, uh, FR Soccer Sam, uh, as always, for, for plenty of good insight. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back with Scott McDonald tomorrow as we look ahead to the big derby at Ibrooks on Monday.